morning. Today we're going to do a sew with me and so we're going to be working on the back of the Petty Four Quilts Along. So this will be the last part of that section and really fun. I'm going to get to show you like the quilt top, how it looks. I'm going to show you two new books published by It's So Emma and then I'm going to show you some what's new stuff and next week just a heads up I'm going to be doing, um, showing you cap sets, which means upcoming Fabric for Moda and Riley Blake. Um, we're not going to have another, we're not going to have a recap of what I worked on this month because my sewing machine at home is broke. So um, I haven't sewn anything. Um, I'm getting it fixed. Something's wrong with, um, like something's really wrong with it. So it's not, um, I can't use it. So I haven't sewn anything. So let's just jump right in. I want to show you the Petty Four. This is the printout that you can get on our website and all the fabric supplies. And I was going to show you my quilt top all put together. And when we put this clip, that just means top left. That's what that means to us. So if I, if I finish it or someone else finishes it, that's what we do. And so we have this all finished. I'm going to show you a quick little trick. When you do your borders and you want them to be straight, this is what you do to get that corner straight. So after you put that on, this one is, I think, straight. But sometimes it gets a little wavy right there. And then that way when it gets quilted and they put the binding on, the binding will be straight. And it's easy to do when you have a skinny border like this. When you have a bigger quilt, it's a little bit harder to do. But this gets it straight. So you can see all of my blocks are put together and what I love about paper piecing with the Itsoma pads is how perfect the blocks are. You know, if you did a regular courthouse step, I could never get that to come out right or this or this or definitely this. Um, I think the only one of these that I could probably get really close to being accurate are the courthouse and the log cabin just because I would make them bigger and trim as you go. But this, I would never be able to get um, accurate. And here's the back. So like I said, we, uh, we pressed as we went to one side, but then when we started putting the blocks together, Teresa pressed them open just because like right here, like if you look right there and right there, there's just a lot of bulk. And so by pressing everything open between the rows and the columns, it lays just a little bit flatter than it would have. So it's a really small quilt. It's 32 inches square. And um, I think this would be really cute on like in your house if you have like a square um, coffee table would be really cute or really cute. Um, I hang a lot of quilts off of my um, fireplace and a lot of people say, well, why, why do you do that? Isn't that dangerous? I don't use fireplace, but you could, uh, cause we live in Texas. So you could like drape it kind of like this. Like you could put a candle like a big candle or something and then just drape it down and it would just be a pop of color. So that's a couple things you could do with it. Um, I'll definitely use mine to decorate. I won't use this one as like a cover or anything. I mean, it could be a baby quilt, but it would be kind of heavy for a baby quilt. But this would be really cute if you did it in baby colors. It'd be a very traditional. Um, and Teresa put this together for me. So thank you to Teresa. And then she also did my binding. One thing that I haven't been doing the last couple of years is my binding. Um, Teresa's been doing it for me. And before that, uh, other people would do it for me. So we cut the binding. There is a little bit left over, like maybe this much. And I'm just going to leave it in my scraps. So this is what's left over. And I'll just put that in my scrap pile. And um, then we just leave this. And then when it comes back from the quilter, um, she'll add the binding. So that's my quilt top. Let's talk about the quilt back. And 
the quilt backing we did a piece backing where we did the design and gave that to you jocelyn did this and this uses lori holt sparkle paper star sparkle star paper so I, i'm going to take out four of these and show you some different things you can do with it because this paper has a lot of potential that people don't see when they first look at it a lot of um, designs i guess Am I having quilting withdrawals? Well, yeah, but the problem is I haven't ha haven't had time to take it to where it needs to be fixed. So it's really my fault, but it's about an hour away. So I'm gonna try to do it this weekend. If not, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So here are four of the blocks. What you could do is you could create just this star and this could be white and then you could leave all of this white and then you would just have a big star in the middle. That's basically what, what this is right there without the outsides. Or you could just do it all together like this. This is what we did here. We just kind of wanted to do a pop of color, but this is a way to create a star with a really fun bias angle that you wouldn't be able to get without the paper. So there's a lot of fun stuff um, that I'm thinking we'll do with this paper just to show you how to use it since I don't think a lot of you know how to use it. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make one block. The block that we're doing today is blue in the center, which is your number one, and white on the outside. So we've already taken the paper and reversed the colors just to do something really fun on the back. I'm going to show you how to make one and then I have some labels and I'm gonna make one label and we're gonna put that either, when we piece it together, it's either gonna go here in the center or bottom right, we'll see. I think center probably would be better. So to start, anytime I'm working with paper like this, I crease it where the sewing lines are gonna be because then it makes it easy for you to see from the front. So this one is easy, it only has four. And the squares that you need for one is five inches. So I'm just gonna cut, I'll do this one as five inches. And because it's foundation paper, you're gonna be trimming it down. It doesn't have to be exact. So I'll place this on the back fabric right side up on the wrong side of the paper. Let's see. Okay. So there we go. And then um, for my background, I have a lot of background left over, by the way. I think I bought way too much extra. So I cut this off this morning. For my backgrounds, you need a one and a half by three and a half inch rectangles. So what I'm going to do here just because I have so much, I feel like I can, I, I, there's plenty of room to waste just because I have so much left over. So I'll cut a three and a half inch strip and then subcut into one and a half. And then this is my salvage. I just wanna make sure I cut through and get all of that off. And then I'll do the three and a half. And this is a Joanna Figueroa white. And it's one of those ones that, you know, you really have to kind of stare at it, get your face right in it to see if it's right side or not. So I know this is the right side. I'm gonna make them all right side up to make it easy. Hopefully I have it right. Oh, can you grab me a design board? A small one, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna make the block as intended for the back. And then I'm gonna show you a way that I come up with um, how I do my labels in my paper piece blocks. And um, I just wanna give you a heads up that when I get to that, sometimes it doesn't look good when I do it and sometimes I redo it. So I have not planned in advance what I'm going to do. So we'll see how, how that turns out. Also, what I like about this uh, block is it uses a lot 
a fabric and it doesn't really have as much waste as some of the other foundation paper pieces. And I like that you can do different versions of the star. And also on the inside, we show you how to do those different versions that are shown on the front. Okay. So now we're just gonna add our whites. And what we'll be doing is putting this right sides together. And we'll just make sure that you have a, enough over on each side. If you go too far this way, or this way when you fold this up and you might be short. So just kind of center it. And also what's great about this is you can do all four at the same time before you press. So I'm gonna put that there, turn this over, stitch on the line. And this one, I always will start a little bit outside the line and go a little bit past the line. And I only need four of these. So I'll just take these and we'll sew all four real quick. So just remember your fabrics right sides together and a short stitch length. I'm using like a 1.2. So this is how it looks and um, the size that we have you cut the paper is perfect because nothing overlaps. Now if you made your strips like four inches, you know, you might get into the other seam or something. And from here we just want to press and then press to each side. There is not a f one foundation paper pack for the entire, oh there is a foundation paper pack that you can buy that will give you all the paper for the entire quilt. Just search Petty, P-E-T-I-T, -E space, F-O-U-R, foundation paper piecing pad. Now from this, this is four and a half unfinished, five inch finished. So there's, oh, it's actually four and a half inches unfinished, four inches finished. So, uh, you can either cut on this outside line, definitely not the inside, or you can just put, I just use my Creative Grids four, four and a half inch ruler, it's easiest. I just set it where it goes on the line and then cut. Oh, I know how to, oh. Okay, so here, then what you do is just pull your papers off. And there's your block. And then you can see that when you start putting them together, you're gonna have a fun back. And what I was showing you with the stars Somehow one of these is not lining up. I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. Something is not adding up in this. These are all the same papers. So I did something wrong. 
Because see how these create the star? That does that, and then this one's supposed to be the other way. Yeah, they're all the same. Okay, somebody tell me what I'm, I'm doing wrong on the layout. But for now, I'm going to go to the next block. Okay, so here's one block. And then... These are some labels I have that are just left over from previous labels I've already cut into from... Um, Sweet water labels. Okay, Denise fixed it for me. They're all the same paper though, right? Put all your numbers facing up. Oh, all the numbers have to face up. That's what I was doing wrong. So see, it creates this. Oh, I know why it's doing that because this is face down. It's upside down, that's why. I'm an idiot. So yeah, you, yeah, sorry. It's because my block is upside down. So thank you, Denise. Okay, so what I, these are just, I have um, a lot of labels from Sweetwater. I'm actually running out of them. But what I like to do is somehow put the label in this block so that I've got my label and then I've got blue and then it just goes right in the center of my backing. So if I do this one, it would take up a lot of area and the blue wouldn't show as much. Um, I don't think this matches. I think this one would look good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on the back of these labels from Sweetwater, there's a sticky, I don't even know what you call it, but I'm gonna peel that off so that I don't accidentally sew that in. So I just peel it off. If you don't peel it off, it'll get it stuck. Like when you're, when you're long arm quilting it, it will um, sticky up the, the needle. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here, and I'm just telling you in advance, sometimes I mess up, so it's not going to, it might not work out perfect. That's why a lot of these are messed up. That's why I run out of them, because I make mistakes. So I'm thinking, see how there's these little dots? I don't want to see those dots, because I don't want to have to keep them straight. So I'm going to cut where my quarter inch line is, can you zoom in, do you think? My quarter inch line is slightly to the left of that dotted line. So that when I sew around it, I don't see it. So you can see the dotted line. Put your quarter inch on it and then move it to the left a little. I'm gonna do that on all sides. And I'm actually gonna go in a little bit more just to get it a little bit smaller. And when I'm doing this, I'm not trying to make it a certain size, if that makes sense. I'm trying to just get it so I can have as much blue around it as possible. And I'm hoping when I sew this, I think I need to cut a little bit smaller. So I want to make sure that all my corners are straight. So when I add my blue, it'll be straight, but I still think I can cut in a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm going to take this fabric, and this is where you probably should start drawing out math, but I'm going to guess because that's what I do at home. So I'm just going to cut this. I have a lot left over, so I'm just going to wing it. So I'm just going to sew these two to the left and the right and then show you what to do. I'm going to switch to a quarter inch foot. Go back to a normal stitch length, sorry, normal stitch length. And 
and then see, I just double check to make sure that I can't see that dotted line because that was my goal. Now, a lot of people leave that dotted line in. I just, for this design, don't want it in. And that doesn't mean on the next one, I won't want it in. I just, every time I do one of these, I just change it up. Then from here, I'm gonna straighten them out. I'm gonna go back and press it one more time. But here I'm just cut, and this is what I mean about wasting. I can either make it perfect or waste fabric and then not worry about it, and that's what I prefer to do. But now I need some bigger pieces up here. So. I'm gonna do this. And I'm not sure if this print is directional or not, but I'm not paying attention to it, if it is. I don't think it'll matter in the end. really good I'm happy okay this fabric collection is blueberry delight we're probably sold out of it because um, we started the sew along quite a bit ago Okay, so now the tricky part is going to be, I want that to be right in the center of this. So I'm going to kind of wing it. I could trim this down to five inches or I could wing it. And usually I wing it. And if it doesn't come out perfect, I just redo it. And that's probably not the best advice. But when I get to the back of a quilt, I'm doing, I'm, I'm basically trying to be more creative and less in the box if that makes sense. Um, when I quilt it, it will probably be swirls. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so here, I'm gonna kind of do this. Like I could do it where my name is in the center, straight. Or I could do it where my name is tilted to the right, but I'm going to keep it straight just because of the layout. So what I'm going to do here, this is one, the opening is one and basically a little bit over one and a half. It's one and five eighths. So this is four and a half, right? So if I take four and a half, I'll do it on my phone. This is what I do. Hopefully no text messages show up. Um, so I take four and a half minus 1.625, divide that by two. That's 1.4. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a friction pin And I'm gonna, sometimes friction pin is not great for um, dark fabric, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna crease it right here. I'm gonna crease that, it didn't really crease. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put the pins over here so that it, I can at least see it. Sometimes with friction pen, if you if you do it on really dark fabric, it'll give you a white line. So I'm just gonna mark one and a half kind of on this outside area. Okay. 
just as a general. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can see it's, um, okay, so here, I kind of need my paper to go here. Yeah, my numbers are, let's see. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna trim this down to the real size because that will help me later. That'll help me get it centered correctly. And since it's just four and a half, I can just cut it to four and a half. This will help me. So now, I can kind of center that in those lines, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna face it down. I'm gonna face it down, but I'm gonna trim the edge. Well, I'm just gonna trim slightly outside the edge so that on the back, I can center it about half an inch. I'm gonna just cut slightly outside these lines and then turn it the other way. So I'm gonna do about right there. And then what I kinda wanna look at here, I'm gonna glue it down I want to make sure the line that's right here that it's perpendicular to this line or parallel. So if I do that and then I go over, I want to see if it's straight. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. I just want to make sure it's straight and it looks straight. So that's good. So I've got that glued down. Turn it a little bit. It's not going to be perfect. But here I am trying to make it perfect. Yeah, okay. Then I'm gonna trim these like you would normally. Just like you would if it was just a regular square that you put on there. And when you start doing piece backings, or if you start doing them, just kind of do them and just give yourself some grace because like I said, I redo these a lot of the time. Because it's not so planned, sometimes I end up having to redo it. And then I'm gonna take these, do the same thing, right sides together, all the way across, stitch the drawn line and then we'll trim it down. So I'm gonna go back to my quarter inch or my open toe foot. So then I'm going to go back and just take the four and a half inch ruler and trim. And I can already tell it came out a little bit different than I was planning, so we'll see what I think of it when I turn it around. My binding is cut two and a half inches wide. On this quilt, two inches would actually look really good also, but I tend to just do two and a half inches, but if you wanted to do smaller, you could go to two. And on those borders, um, I'm just 
when I cut that, I was just lining up the border sizes, the borders only. Oh, it came out good. I like it. Yeah, that looks really good. Yay, okay, it came out straight. I was thinking it wasn't going to come out straight. So see, it's going to look like this when you start putting them together. And then I'll keep this one in the center. So I didn't, I didn't follow the fabric placement exactly. We're just going to do random. And um, the reason I'm going to, what, so what I was trying to do here, just to kind of show you, when you were looking at the labels, I wanted to have as little white as possible so that this blue would really show and I would still have a design in the middle. And I also picked a fabric that was really bold against the white so you would see your, you know, my name and the label. So you do have to kind of think about the fabric that's going to go around it because if you would have picked something really light. Here's one of my leftovers. Like this would probably not show up like that does. And so that's a fun way you can do a label on the back of your quilt and you don't have to use the paper if you're not doing a paper on the quilt. You know, obviously we're doing this to make it work into what Jocelyn designed for us, but you don't have to do that. Um, so that is Petty 4. Now what I'm going to do, I will show it to you when it's all quilted and bound and everything. It's going to be um, a little bit of time before that's done. I wanted to show you the cottage temperature. Now I did, I'm going to tell you I cheated and had Teresa sew this for me. And the reason why is my sewing machine doesn't work. Now I could take my sewing machine from work home and switch it out and do all of that. But I just don't like to do that because if we need our sewing machine here, um, so here is my February block. And since February did not have, it had 29 days, not 30, it has a window. So here's my February block and I am sewing this with um, Flower Girl by My Sew Quilty Life. And she has her second collection coming out later in the year. I'm going to get to show it to you later um, next week. So that's February. Okay, the next ones are going to be pictures. So I'm really excited to show you something I've been working on with Lori for years. This is the Prairie Home Quilt Book Reservation. And this book has 30 quilts. And I'm just going to show you some different images um, there are quilts, runners, tabletops, pillows. The book is going to come out in November 2024. It's going to have the binding like all of Lori's books do. That's the front cover. Now, that's not the final cover. We're going to be doing a photo shoot at her house, and it will be the same like Farm Girl Vintage, Spelling Bee, all of those books where it has the covered binding. And then we'll show you some other pictures. And um, I, I'm going to talk in detail a little bit more about it, but what she's done with these quilts is she's colored them all in her fabric collections, and she's put together bundles that go with the kits, and it's a mix of different collections. We will have all of that fabric online next week, but if you already have a stash of her fabric, then you can just sew these with your stash. Like this one would be perfect. I love that uh, scrappy binding. And that one is going to be a quilt kit also. And so 30 quilts is going to be amazing. So we're pre-selling that book now. And um, Lori has been working on that for, I would say, three years. This one is uh, probably the longest that we have had in terms of planning a book. It's called Prairie Home. And I'm going to talk about designer mystery real quick. So I, I'm just showing you this because when Jocelyn gets prototypes um, and they come in, we'd like to show you. So this week, this prototype came in. This is the box for Designer Mystery. It's a little bit different than last time's. It's skinnier. Width. And there is a recipe on the back for cherry bars, I believe that came from um, the kitchen of Cheryl Cohorn, which means either her or her mom's recipe. So that came in 
and then that's the inside flap, and then um, the label. And then I'm gonna show you some new stuff. Um, let's see, shout out to you, Kimberly. You helped me two weeks ago with my brown ironing board problem, and I just wanna say thank you. Well, thank you. So, this is our monthly specials. This is Essex. Now, Essex is um, a linen fabric. So some of it is like 50% linen, 50% cotton. Some of it's 80% linen, 20% cotton. They're all different textures. Some of them are metallic, some are not. And we have, I'm just showing you kind of the collection. There are bright colors, there are dull colors, but this is 20% off this month, which is March, 2024. Dritz Notions are 30% off. So there are hundreds of Dritz Notions. They're all 30% off until the end of March. And then Annie's quilting books are 20% off. So here are a couple of those. And then Vanessa Gertz and Layla Boutique patterns are also on sale. And these are PDFs and paper. So if a paper is sold out, you can always get the PDF. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some new kits. I'm not gonna hold up and stand up today. I don't feel that great today, actually. I'm gonna just show it to you on the table. The Designer Mystery, if you buy Designer Mystery, you get that box with the finishing kit if you buy the finishing kit. This is the flirty quilt kit. And this is the Tranquility Collection by Kim Deal. This quilt is 60 inches square and really fun. I love it. Um, this is the first time Kim Deal's ever done a collection where it's one print just colored a bunch of different ways. And it's just really fun. I think this pattern would be so great uh, for a baby blanket just because it's fun and it uses 14 three quarter yards. It's one size. And we do have um, a cutting diagram to help you make sure you cut it correctly with your fat quarter or with your quarter yards. Three quarter yards, sorry. And um, there's like a little tip on the back, but the way that we get this to work is kind of ingenious. It's actually Kim Deal doing it, not us. You make it and then you trim at the top and the bottom. So really fun, and that kit is now available. The fabric collection is available. It's designed by Kim Deal, pieced by Lori, and quilted by Joanna Marsh. The next kit is the Box Lanterns Quilt Kit featuring Paradise Collection by Pat Sloan. This is one of our It's So Emma patterns called Evergreen that was published in 2017 and we recolored it it was pieced by Rebecca quilted by Joanna Marsh and uh, just so you know Pat Sloan fat quarter bundles they always go in and out of stock but we keep those in stock for about 9 to 12 months so if it's if it sells out it'll be back if that makes sense okay so this is ombre confetti metallic half year bundle that just came in by Vanessa Gertson now, if you looked on our coming soon page, she is coming out with a ombre heart collection, not to be confused with ombre dots. And I'll get to, I'll get to show you that later, next, next week. And I will open um, one of these to show you the ombre effect. Designer Mystery starts in May or June, I think June 2024. It's using Ann Sutton's fabric. And then Linda asked me if I enjoyed my birthday. Yes, it was great. I got the best gift ever. I love these warmies. It's a brand and I've, they're, they have eye masks. Anyway, you put it in the, in the microwave and it warms up. So my son gave me a stuffed animal and I was like, what is this? He's like, it's a wormy. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. So I told him he got the best gift. I have never even seen the stuffed animals. 
So, so here's how the ombre works with Vanessa's. Now, not all ombres work this way. And so this is now in stock by the yard. The pre-cut here is a half yard, not a fat quarter, just so that you get the effect. And then I did want to let you know I made a mistake on, I had a, I made a statement on a Juki saying it was discontinued. It's not. Sorry about that, guys. If y'all have any questions on Juki machines, go to Junkie, Juki, Juki Junkies, and they can help you out. Um, I actually recently bought, this is the Rainy Day Spotted Fat Quarter Bundle. It's just a new spotted bundle we put together. Um, so I recently bought a industrial Juki. It, I have not had it delivered yet. It is going to be at work, not at home. So um, he showed me something at the store that I got confused with a different machine. So I just want to correct that. Rainy Day Spotted Fat Quarter Bundle. Then we have Tulip Cottage by Melissa Mortensen. And this one has a lot of, it has a great range of colors. This one's a big floral. I love big florals like this for borders. It's not as trendy as it used to be, but I still like it. She's got little cows. This one's like a um, rolling hills type thing. So it's got a church and a little puppy dog and a Jeep. So a deeper pink. This is that same floral. This is the same rolling hill in green. A mix of two greens, so you've got a lighter and a darker. This is blue, actually. The big floral. And again, this is Tulip Cottage by Melissa Mortensen. putting it back in order so that if y'all buy this then it's back in the right order Elmer and Eloise Elmer and Eloise this is so cute I love this one and if I was making a baby quilt right now this is what I would make it out of it's this is Dina Rudder for Riley Blake that is um there is not a one yard bundle of Tulip Cottage And just throw your questions in. I'll answer them at the end. So I just, I really like the color of this. And it's a smaller group. And it really fits into how um, people are decorating their nurseries. It's really cute. And it's got bears and raccoons and deer and chickadees. And that says friends, bear, hugs, snuggles. Look at those bears, so cute. Do you want me to fold it back up in order? Okay. This is Bird Song by Jared Brandevig for Jared Brandevig for Maywood Studios. And uh, Jara has been a fabric designer for a long time. She designed for Lucian for years and years. And we actually have videos about probably eight years ago where she came and did videos on how to do Quilt As You Go. And she has two Quilt As You Go books with C&T. And we did just get... Um, we just got an email that uh, Kimberbell from Maywood is going to have a new collection, um, a Halloween collection, so we got that online too. That's the same company. So very minty pink, very romantic. 
And then this one, this is called Happy Trails by Michael Miller. I can tell you that several of the bolts have sold out already. This is a vintage print from years ago that I think they recolored. I'm, the sales rep wasn't 100% sure, but I love this. And I actually, my nephew who's now, let's see, he's now 25 and in college. When he was a baby, I made him a blanket with um, some fabric similar to this. Look how cute that is. This is so cute. I bet Brittany likes this. And this is a border stripe. So you might have seen something like this years and years ago from Michael Miller. It's so cute. It's got the states. The next collection is by Cherry Goodry for Benertex. And this one has a panel with different size blocks. So I would, when I envision this, I envision a quilt that's either designed around the panels or pillows. Like you could put this on the front of a pillow and this on the back, this on the front and this on the back. So you could make it a two-sided pillow. Again, Hello Pumpkin. And I'm gonna show you the collection. It's really pretty colors. This is a really nice um, brown with a touch of gray to it, but I it's a really nice color. Text. And then these are really cute. They're really big houses. And there's different um, words of gratitude that you could fussy cut around owls, leaves. Then we have Colors of Summer by Jackie Decker for Wilmington Prince. And this one is a very Americana. It doesn't really look like it when you first look at it, but when you start looking at the colors as a whole, when Kevin and I bought it, I was like, oh, this is great for people who like Americana. And that's a cute little patchwork that you could put on the back. Or something you could do with this is if you ever see a fabric like this and you want more prints, you could cut two and a half inch squares out of them and get more variety. Now, obviously not all of them will fit two and a half, but you could get some one and a half inch squares and get different prints. So daisies, really nice florals, dots, really pretty colors. And this one's just a very, it's like a stripe. It would be hard, I don't wanna say a border stripe, but it might look really good if you did that on a binding, because it'd be fun. Vivian is a uh, purple collection by Carrie Quinn for Marcus Fabrics. And this one is very lavender. This is the second purple collection that Marcus Brothers did this year. Their previous one also did really, really well. It was called I Love Purple. This one has some different variances in the greens and purples. Again, Vivian. This is the Reef Fish Batiks by McKenna Ryan. So McKenna Ryan, um, she does very large batik collections. So this is Reef Jellyfish and this is Seaside Jellyfish. This is 21 fat quarters here. And this one is 24 fat quarters here. I have no idea why the company Hoffman did them rolled differently, but they're the same collection. So. There you go. Really pretty. And I am going to talk about um, Sherry McConnell and Cherry Chelsea's um, brand new book in a second, too. Uh, 2024 Cave Collective. So this is bright, dark, 
and pastel. So what Cave does is he comes out with collections by year. So our 2023 bundles are now discontinued and now he has 2024. So you've got bright, dark, pastel. This is fresh linen. Art Gallery Fabrics, Katie O'Shea. This is a half yard bundle. And we, um, we also have this in a fat quarter bundle. We just picked this one to show you. And this one's got like the laundry look. Laundry line. This one's really pretty. It's got like little um, sparklers on it. Or those little dandelion flowers, I think. This is really pretty. This has a really nice range of colors. It kind of reminds me of magnolias, even though it's not magnolias. I'm not sure what those are. And um, we're getting to the end, so definitely start putting your questions in. This is Seedling by Katarina Rochella for Art Gallery Fabrics. And this is, um, I, I'm hoping this is going to become a basic where you can always get it, if that makes sense. But it's um, very neutral. It's got kind of a textured linen look, but it is cotton. But it's, it's a really cool movement of color. And then this is also, um, this is Paradise, ba Paradise Bay Batiks by uh, Banyan Batiks. They have great batiks. And we just came out with a free video. You're not going to see it for a while. I filmed it yesterday called Full Color. And this is the kind of collection that would work with that. So if you like batiks, you could kind of keep that in mind. And Banyan Batiks always have, um, when I look at them in the way that I describe them, is a lot of variance in color, like a lot of contrast between the two colors is the way that I think of Banyan Batiks. And Banyan Batiks is actually produced by Northcott Fabrics, if you're curious. So really pretty. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the Family Favorites quilt book that we are publishing for Sherry McConnell and Chelsea Stratton. That one will be coming out in September 2024. This is a mother-daughter collaboration. It features blocks in four sizes and we have it set in four samplers and it highlights each of the quilts block size. So like one quilt will use one block size, the other quilt will use another. It's really cool how we put it together and um, there are four samplers in the book. The book features Sherry and Chelsea's family favorites and um, it, it features a couple of their collections mixed together. And the first quilt, this is the cover of the book this will be shipping in September. You can pre-order it at Fat Quarter Shop. And then the Brightly Sampler will be featuring um, Laguna Sunrise that will be shipping. And then this is the Saltwater Sampler that is also featuring, I think, Laguna Sunrise. And we're going to have two sew-alongs. One of them will be sewn by Chelsea. One of them will be sewn by Sherry. And um, those are the two that they picked for the sew-alongs. So you can reserve your book, Family Favorites, at Fat Quarter Shop. And now I'm going to answer the rest of the questions. What weight of paper did I did we print Kimberly's patterns on for her three ring binder? Is it cardstock? Uh, most of them are on cardstock, but I did buy. I don't think I those little. I think I took them home. I bought on Amazon these little circles, 
some of my papers were falling out of the binder. So I bought these like reinforcement circles to keep my papers inside on a couple of them. Do I have a pattern recommendation for Tulip Cottage? Big florals, directional landscapes. Um, Sherry Goodry has a pattern company. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, this one. Um, I was gonna say the one that the the one that Sherry Goodry's she has patterns, so you could look there. This is Melissa Mortensen's. I would look at her patterns. But what I would say when you see a fabric line is to just search the fabric designer first, see what they have, and then just kind of think. Um, it'd be hard to come up with something off the top of my head. We will be doing socialites. It will not be till 2025 or 2026. The reason why is those are free patterns. They take, that series probably takes like 5,000 hours of employees time. And so we have to kind of take a break from it sometimes. What's my take on seeing cute fabric but not having a quilt or use in mind? Okay, so if I love a fabric and I know I want to use it in the future but I don't know what I want to do with it, I'll buy a layer cake because it's affordable, it's not too big, it's not too small. But then what I like to do is I'll go to my website, Fat Quarter Shop, and I'll search like, I'll go to the layer cake pattern page and search best selling. Or if I want to do a bigger quilt, I'll go to the Fat Quarter page and search best selling. So because then you know, I kind of see what's popular. Lori's book is coming out in November and Sherry's, Sherry um, and Chelsea's book is coming out in September. We are pre-selling Camille's new fabric line. That went online last Friday. So um, new fabric collections from Moda were released last Friday where stores could put them online to sell. So those are now online. I'm gonna go in depth on those next week. Um, and show you all of the fabrics up close, which will be super exciting. And I just wanted to thank you so much for watching every Friday. I really love to spend my time with you, and um, I hope you'll be with me next Friday, and I'll see you then.